Okay, so the next step is to get our Excel spreadsheet organized in such a way that we can convert it into a QIF file. Um, we need to have it organized in columns or fields that QuickBooks or Quicken ultimately will be able to recognize, and that's what uh, that's what the Excel to QIF add-in is going to do. It's going to take the information in this format and convert it into a file that can then be imported into Quicken or QuickBooks. But we have to get the uh, formatting right to a point. Um, so what information we put in the spreadsheet is what will wind up in Quicken. One, uh, one field that we have to be very careful about is the category field because this is going to translate into the expense accounts that uh, the Quicken or QuickBooks recognizes. So these names, the names that appear in, the, in this field, have to either be identical to a, an expense category that already exists in the destination software, or if you put in a new one in this field, let's say we're putting in uh, fuel and oil here for the first time, we have to use it consistently. It has to be spelled and formatted identically each time we use it, or when we import, we'll be creating uh, duplicate expense accounts. We don't want to do that, so make sure that we... Uh, that's pretty easy if we're uh, entering this data for the first time in Excel. The autocomplete feature uh, makes it pretty pretty easy to check ourselves and make sure that we're entering things exactly the same way each time. But if we are, say, uh, converting or importing from a spreadsheet that uh, was, say, made in an earlier version of Excel, or we had autocomplete turned off or something, or we've gone in and made changes, then it's possible that these field names might not be consistent. So just check and make sure that, you know, every time you want to put something in the fuel slash oil expense category, for example, that that's exactly the uh, the way in which the expense category is is shown for each uh, for each row in the table. So now we're going to take this information and use Excel to to QIF to convert it into uh, an importable file. So we go to our Add-ins ribbon tab, Excel QIF, Excel to QIF uh, command group. We're going to use the save to QIF command, and we get this little dialog box that pops up. So we'll pick a destination for the output file. For some reason, the default file name that's come up here is having this money. I'm just going to call this sample one again. just because it's going to be the same as the sample one Excel file that I'm starting with. Um, so we select an output file. The next thing we've got to do is select the data, the input data that we're going to use. Um, auto select, clicking the auto select button with our cursor somewhere in the table of data, we're quite likely to wind up with the correct range in Excel selected. What we want to do is select only the data that's going to be imported, leaving out the row that contains headers. Um, we're going to instruct, if you will, Excel to QIF in a, in a minute what to do with each of these fields. But the first thing we want to do is grab the area of the spreadsheet that contains the actual data. And in this case, picking auto select accomplish that. Um, if it hadn't, what we would do is manually select, in this case, cells A2 to G8, if we want to include uh, if there were data in here. In this case, we could have stopped at uh, E8. So just the, just the data, just the area of the uh, spreadsheet that contains the data we want to import. Now, um, in order to complete the conversion, what we want to do is 
tell the conversion software how the data is arranged here. So fields present in input data, we put them in in the order in which they appear. So the first column that we have here is the date. The second would be our check number. And you notice that as I tick each of these boxes, the column order appears in this box down here. If I were to clear these, the little column order uh, notation would, uh, would clear and I'd be starting all over again. So if you muck up, if you tick something in the wrong order, just clear. So in order, my columns are date, number, payee, category, and amount. I don't have anything else in this case, so I'm, I'm good. Um, under options here, this is the sort of primary account that we're going to import these transactions into. Um, if we had a list, say, of bank transactions and credit card transactions and cash transactions, we would want to separate them out and import them separately. Um, so for now, these are, I'm assuming that these are transactions that went through our bank. Um, so I will select bank for the account type. Um, in accounting terms, that's the account that would get credited. In other words, each of these transactions would represent a credit or a reduction in the amount that's in the bank account, and the other side of the transaction for uh, bookkeepers out there would be a debit to the respective expense categories or expense accounts. Our date format, as you can see, um, our date format is four digit year, month, day. So I'm going to pick that as my date format in this pull down. Specific processing it doesn't apply. So I'm going to click Invert Amounts. What that does is that is going to indicate that with respect to the bank account, each of these amounts is a reduction to the bank account. Um, in effect, it's telling it that it's a credit to the bank account. If we had the data set up so that um, there were separate columns for debit and credit, we would, we would tick that box, but that's not, uh, not how we've got it set up here. So. so that should be all that we need in order to um, take this Excel data and put it into a QIF file. Let's press convert and see what happens. Okay. So we've got some uh, trouble in the date column. Let's take a look at that. Okay. I might have to uh, might have to change the date format because uh, Excel to QIF converter is not uh, not recognizing that. So I'm going to stop, or I'm going to pause here and uh, change my date formatting, come back and uh, see if that will get it to work.